know, we know that the word of God says that all of us, uh, all believers can prophesy. And so that's why I said, get ready to participate uh, tonight and uh, bring your supply. Uh, and so this is, uh, I'm going to turn it over to Brother Fred. Okay. As Sherry said, the title of the message tonight is Prophetic Equipping. And this is not about equipping prophets. It's about equipping the body of Christ so mm -hmm. that we can operate in the supernatural realm. Amen. It's really important uh, that we be with uh, people who will equip us. You know, there's two kinds of uh, ministries, uh, basically, in the body of Christ. There's one that's building their own ministry, and uh, they're uh, bringing people in and and wanting to grow bigger and bigger and have bigger budgets and bigger buildings. That's a, they're, they're concerned about their ministry. And if you join uh, an organization like that, then they will plug you in uh, where you will have the greatest benefit to their program. But there's another kind of ministry, and this is what Jesus uh, gave us, uh, those that would equip the saints. And so the focus of equipping ministries are the saints, uh, to equip the saints, mm -hmm. let the, uh, help the saints grow up to do the ministry. So it's the saints doing the ministry. It's not uh, the minister uh, doing everything and just uh, having it all within one building. It's not about a building. It's about the body of Christ. And so we're talking about this in this series, building the kingdom, not building a building, not building a ministry, but building the kingdom Hallelujah. and equipping the saints. And uh, our core uh, verses uh, are Ephesians 4, verses 11 and 12. And I'll ask you to read these. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the equipping of the saints or preparing the saints for the work of the ministry, for the building up or edifying, edifying the body of Christ. So it's about building up the body of Christ. That's building the kingdom. Uh, it's not about building a ministry. It's building the kingdom. And uh, really, we're talking about how to live in the supernatural realm. Uh, and supernatural realm. Go Amen. ahead and tell us here. Amen. What's the Amen. Supernatural realm. Well, what the Lord said to me this morning early was that the supernatural realm is not a destination. It's some, it's not something that we strive for. It's not something that we are headed toward. It is where we abide. It is where we live day in and, and day out uh, through the night. Uh, even while we're sleeping, uh, the supernatural realm is where the presence of God is, and he's with us. And he said, I will be with you always. And and so uh, this excited me uh, 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 tremendously <laughs> this morning uh, that um, that that we're it's not a place that we go we go along in the natural realm and the carnal realm and then all of a sudden we decide that we're going to go over into the supernatural realm and that but that's not the right thinking uh the correct thinking is that we live in the supernatural realm hallelujah. oh hallelujah. hallelujah you know and in enoch did that moses did that abraham did that they lived in the supernatural realm with the presence of God always being with them. Well, and, I, and, I, and I love that. I love it. I love and, it. And that's the way we're all to operate and live. Live and move and have our being in the supernatural realm. Amen. Uh, Jesus, uh, we've been raised with him. Hallelujah. And we can come to the throne of God uh, to receive grace and mercy by the blood of Jesus and Hebrews uh, 12 says we've come uh, to Mount Zion, to the heavenly Jerusalem. Amen. We're there. Amen. Uh, Amen. That's where the judge of all is. That's where the blood of Jesus is crying out. Uh, we're in the supernatural realm. And, and the uh, apostles and prophets help get us prepared for that. And so last uh, time, uh, two weeks ago, we talked about the apostolic ministry. Just introduced it a little bit. 
Uh, we'll talk more about it again uh, later uh, because it's important. But these two offices and these two functions are very, very important to the body of Christ because they're equipping us to live in the supernatural realm, to Amen. be Amen. who God has called us uh, to be. And, uh, you know, it was just a few weeks ago that a man told me that uh, his pastor told him there weren't apostles anymore. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you know, Ephesians 4.13 says we're going to have apostles and prophets mm -hmm. until everybody comes into the mm -hmm. unity of the faith and the fullness of the stature of Jesus Christ. And we're not there. We're not there yet. Hallelujah. So that directly contradicts what uh, Jesus said, but uh, uh, what Paul wrote well, there in Ephesians 4, but it also contradicts what Jesus said in Luke chapter 11, verse uh, 49. For this reason also, the wisdom of God said, I will send them prophets and apostles, and some of them they will kill, and some of them they will persecute. Okay, so that doesn't mean they're going to be received by everybody. Uh, but and particularly those people who are building their own ministry are not going to want to receive apostles and prophets because apostles have a bigger picture. They see the whole body of Christ and the, they see the order in the body of Christ and they also lay foundation. And the prophets, uh, they give direction and they uh, speak for God. They're the voice of God on, on mm -hmm. the earth. And, mm -hmm. and so there are a lot of times they're not well received in though by those ministers who are building their own ministry because that's not what we're here to do but what i want you to see from this verse in luke 11 is that i will send and so in every generation you can look at that verse and it says i will send so i will send in this generation and the next generation comes along they still look at that verse and it's still still something going on and on and then we see the same thing in matthew uh, 23 about the prophets here read it, Matthew 23 please therefore behold I am sending you prophets and wise men and scribes some of them you will kill and crucify and some of them you will flog in your synagogues and persecute from city to city so I am sending that's a present tense that's yeah. present perfect that that's, it's just going on and on and on so don't tell me that there are no prophets and there are no apostles because Jesus said, I'm sending them. And if we haven't uh, seen them, well, we better open our eyes because Jesus is sending. And, and then mm -hmm. th there's another thing that people tell me a lot, and that is all I need is God. I, it's just me and God. And, and I need to hear his voice and I spend time with him. It's just me and God. But you know, Second Chronicles 2020 paints a whole different picture. Second Chronicles mm -hmm. 2020. Mm -hmm. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets, and you will prosper. Okay, so we need to hear Hallelujah. God. We need to hear God. That's true. We need to hear God. Each one of us individually needs to hear God. We also need to hear the prophets. If we're not hearing the prophets, I mean, we may our growth is retarded. It's, right. it's, it's stopped. Right. Because this verse says we need to hear God. And we need to hear the prophets. And if we're not, then it's going to retard our growth. We're, we're going to be just like a little people. We're not going to be grow up into the stature of the fullness of Jesus Christ. Now, when we think about this particular thing about prophetic equipping, it's to equip all of us. We need prophets in our life. Just like that said there in uh, uh, Second Chronicles 22, we need prophets in our life. We need to be interacting with them. And so it's not the same as just being in a big congregation and once a year they have a prophet comes in and he prophesies some. No, this is, we need relationships. We need a prophetic oh, community. We Hello. need to be part wow, of a prophetic, prophetic community. community. Woo! This is what this group is. Hallelujah. I'm just telling you right now. So get ready to bring your supply. And, and all of us need to know uh, prophets and have apostles in our life, our relationships with them. You know, a lot of times uh, I'm sitting with the prophets and, and I'm hearing some things uh, myself from the Lord and then they speak it out. Well, that helps confirm that I'm hearing from the Lord and I need that and I need the confirmation. I need the confirmation by the prophets and I need the instruction by the prophets. And so it's important. We cannot 
grow into whom God has called us to be. We cannot fulfill purpose and destiny without apostles and prophets in our life. Okay. Amen. So Amen. first, there, there are three basic things I'm going to say that I believe these are the most important thing that uh, prophets do in equipping the saints. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I've said this for years and years. Uh, it's not personal prophecy is not the most important things that the prophets do. The most important thing that the prophets do is to equip us to hear God's voice. Amen. Ourselves. Amen. And the Amen. way they do it is if you're interacting with the prophets and, uh, uh, then they may say a prophetic word to you. They may give you a personal word of prophecy, or maybe they're saying something, and, but it's the same thing you're hearing God say. So you're hearing God say, and then here a prophet is saying the same thing. Uh, and it may be for the body of Christ. It may not be for you. It may be for a bunch of people. And, and the prophet is saying it to all, but you've already heard it. And see, that's a mm -hmm. confirmation oh, by yeah. the prophets. That's the most important thing that the prophets can do in equipping you is to confirm that you are hearing Being from the Lord, hearing from the Lord yourself. That's the most important mm -hmm. thing uh, that prophets do. Now we know from uh, John chapter 10, uh, verse 27 and other places in John 10 that my sheep mm -hmm. hear, hear my, my voice. voice and they follow me. This is Jesus yes. speaking. These are the words of Jesus. He said, mm -hmm. my sheep, hear my voice and they follow me. You know, and this is a, the verse that changed my life spiritually. I confessed over and over. I spoke it out of my mouth over and over uh, several times a day for days, for weeks. I spoke, I am one of your sheep and I hear your voice. I am one of your sheep and I hear your voice. I'm one of your sheep and I hear your voice. And, and, and it, it started to take root uh, and, be, and become part of me. And then the Lord began to give me instructions and things to do. And, and I began to do them. And I began to experience uh, that confirmation that, yes, I am one of his sheep. And I do hear his voice. And I, and I obey his voice. And so it, it changed me. Uh, my spirit life began to to um, burst out and uh, in after doing that. And there's a lot of people that have told us that, well, they don't hear the voice of the Lord. They, they don't hear the voice of the Lord. Now that's, that's very sad because he said, my sheep hear my voice. And, and so they think oftentimes they think because they're not hearing the voice that they're not really born again. They're not, not one of them. But what they have to mm -hmm. do, they have to be equipped and, and the prophets are uh, those people who help equip them to hear the Lord. Sherry's taught a lot of people uh, how to how to hear the Lord uh, and and just hear the voice of the Lord. You know, uh, uh, John chapter fifteen verse seven. I, I love this out of the Voice translation. I love the Voice translation. I don't know if you ever a reader or not, but listen to. Uh, John 15, 7. This is a real important verse for all of us. Listen to what it says. If you abide in me and my voice abides in you, anything you ask will come to pass for you. Woo hallelujah. 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 Don't think it's just a, a written word that's inside of you and you, you just know the written word. You, you've got to hear that living word, mm. that that word that uh, comes uh, comes alive in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that, that's Hallelujah. what we're talking about here. Sherry, I have another verse there too. After a wind, earthquake, and fire. Yeah. Okay. So it's talking about how do we hear. And, and I like uh, uh, 1 Kings 19 because Elijah was hiding in a cave. And there was a uh, wind and there was uh, an earthquake and there was a fire. Uh, but, you know, the voice of the Lord was not in any of those mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. And I want to share to read this verse in First Corinthians, uh, First Kings 19. 11 and 12. After a wind, an earthquake and a fire, there was a sound of a breeze. And through this breeze, a gentle quiet voice 
entered into Elijah's ears. Okay. So it comes like, just like the wind. Uh, and you have to catch it. A lot of times uh, you just hear that on the wind. Uh, and, and you know, when I was a little boy, my grandmother lived in a house up on the hill. Uh, and mm -hmm. she could see me out there feeding the horses. And, and she'd uh, holler at me. And I could hear her words on the wind. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, it'd be easy to miss them. It'd be very easy to miss them. And it's the same thing with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is described as being the wind and the breath of God. Oh, hallelujah. And, and so hallelujah. It's, it's like he's moving on the wind. And uh, Revelations 2, 7 talks about these wind words. So, so mm, he's speaking mm, wind mm, words mm. to the church. And we've got to catch them. And we've got to be prepared and listen to them. That's the way I listen for my grandmother. I, I would listen to I, and I, I'd be down there. I might even have my back to her. I might not even know she was up on that uh, hill, uh, but she's hollering at me. Uh, and then I'd uh, turn and greet her. Uh, but I had to, I had to listen to, for it because otherwise mm -hmm. her words would just pass on because it's a long distance away. Uh, but she could see me, and then those words would just travel on the wind. Let's. Oh, Revelation Revelation. two seven. I want you to listen to this verse. This verse is tremendous. Are your ears awake? Listen. Listen to the wind words. The spirit blowing through the churches. Hallelujah. I'm about to call each conqueror to dinner. I'm spending a banquet. I'm spreading a banquet table of tree of life fruit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you've got to hear the wind words. They're, yes. They're just coming. So many times I hear something, it comes up, and if I don't catch it right then. Right then. It's going to be gone, and I, I won't have any memory of it. I've got to catch those wind words because a lot of times they just come up out of my spirit. And, and so the prophets, one of the most important things they do, and I believe this is the very, very most important thing that the prophets do, and that is to equip us all. Uh, to, to hear, hear the voice of God. The voice of God. Now, without the prophets, see, we wouldn't know if we were hearing or not. And, and so they've been a, a, they've been a critical part of my life uh, that we have them in our lives and they speak into our lives and certainly they give us prophetic words, but also they've helped confirm that I'm hearing the Lord myself. Amen. And, amen. and so again, prophetic equipping is about equipping the whole body of Christ, not just the prophets, but all those who would prophesy. Amen. Amen. Now, the second thing that is, I believe, a very important thing and a critical thing that the prophets do in equipping the saints, and that is equipping us to know. Oh, a knowing. Mm, a knowing. We have a knowing. And this is very important. And, and I'll just give you uh, a, a couple of uh, personal examples. And I, I worked at the university for years and I worked with a lot of different people. And there was one man that I worked with. He was brilliant. He, he, was, he was brilliant. I loved to work with him and he was a good friend. Uh, but he had no sense of knowing what was right and what was wrong. It was, uh, and I'm not talking about evil or versus good or anything like that. It was, it's about in research, doing research. And, and he couldn't look at uh, what he had come up with and decide whether or not it, it, it was right. Now he was brilliant, but we would say we had no common sense. Uh, <laughs> but, but see, I, I had no knowing and I would know what to do and how to do it. And I would know whether it was right or not as we were doing research. And, and he often commented about that. And of course I didn't tell him that he didn't have any sense. But he often talked about that I saved us uh, from some real problems because I would know things. I would know things. And there's different ways that you can know things. You can know things uh, supernaturally because the Holy Spirit has poured uh, into your life. Uh, I'm talking about knowing things that you don't uh, have any real facts to back it up, but you just know things. You know uh, by the Spirit of God uh, that has revealed something to you. You may have a knowing of what to do in emergencies. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of people that w when they're under pressure or have to make a quick decision, they don't know uh, what to do and they're just paralyzed. But we all need to be able to know what to do in emergencies. Uh, do we go that way or that way? You've got to make a decision quick. What are you going to do? 
and so that knowing see is also a supernatural knowing and it, and it's something that you may have in you supernaturally but you don't uh you don't have the natural facts to back it up another thing is maybe first impressions you know i, I think about a lot of husband and wife uh, ministry uh, situations and the husband just go running ahead ahead long into situation and the wife says Oh, but that's not a person you you need to be uh, uh, spending time with. That, that person is a backstabber. That person ha has all these problems. So, the, you, you know, it's good that we're married and that we have uh, our, our spouses uh, help, help us where we're weak. Uh, maybe they're strong. And I, I've seen that in a lot of cases that, that uh, spouses uh, can see things that one spouse doesn't see, the other spouse might see and help keep security and safety and protection uh, by bringing that. So we're talking about an important thing that the prophets do, and it's critical, help us all knowing. And here's another personal example yeah. that I've only had one girlfriend. I only had one girlfriend in all my life, and and she's sitting here beside me today. Yeah. We've been together 61 years. We've been married 59, but we were dated for a year and we were engaged for a year. And so that makes a total of 61 years. And so this month, mm -hmm. uh, we've been together 61 years. I, I, in that 61 years, I've never thought about marrying anybody else. I've, that's, I've known this is the one. She's the one for me. Now, she had a lot of boyfriends, but I, <laughs> she was the one for me. I knew that. And, and uh, that's a knowing. That, that's just a knowing. Uh, and, and there are ways that we know things. And so let's look at a couple of things. In uh, uh, First of all, John 16, 13, Jesus said, I'm going to send you the spirit of truth, and he's going to show you some things so that you will know what's coming in the future. Well, I'd it's, like to give an example of knowing. Okay. okay. And this was when our son, Travis, uh, who at 18 wanted to uh, go to Texas and be and, and be a cowboy. And um, because his, his granddad, uh, Freddie's dad, uh, told him that he was born there and that he was meant to be a cowboy. And uh, actually Travis was born here in Georgia. Uh, and uh, not in not in Texas, and uh, but he loved his granddad, and he wanted to uh, to to move to Texas. Uh, but one night, um, I I just had a a knowing inside of me that he was in an unsafe situation. But he was twelve hundred miles away. But he was twelve hundred miles away, and he had given me previously. Uh, uh, this uh, neighbor's telephone number and that if I needed to reach him that I could, you know, call this person and, and she would know where he would be. Well, this was very late yeah. uh, at night. Like two, and, uh, two o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. It was like two o'clock in the morning. And, and, and I just had this knowing inside of me. And I know now that it was the Holy spirit. Uh, and, that he was not safe. He was not in a good situation. And so I called this telephone number and the person answered. And no I said, woman answered. and I said, is my son Travis there? And she said, yeah, he's right here. And I he got on the phone and I said, you need to leave that place and go back to where you're supposed to be. You're not in a safe situation. And and so that the knowing that we have from the Holy Spirit uh, helps us not only to make decisions, but also to to be able to keep people uh, from um, disasters and from situations that are not where where they need to be. Well, see, we Sherry and I are connected with lots and lots and lots of people, and and uh, her knowing is. Uh, certainly heightened uh, to anybody else I know of, but but she knows what's going on in people's lives, and not not because she's communicated with them, but she just knows by the spirit. I'm talking about supernaturally knowing, and, and so uh, 
uh, she will pray for them. We'll pray over this situation. We'll know, pray over that situation. Mm-hmm. That's because she knows things about what's going on. And it's important. Uh, the people that we give covering to, I want you to know that uh, we know what's going on in your life. Hallelujah. And uh, what, because the Holy Spirit shares it. but So if, if we're giving somebody cover, uh, the Holy Spirit knows that and he, he operates through us. We need each other we need we, people yes, who are, I mean, uh, that we're connected with that know no, no. Uh, know us and know what to uh, what's going on in our life we all need these things and, and don't think that we're just a uh, uh, an island unto ourselves no I mean, we need I mean, people around us and even if we don't know ourselves then have somebody connected to you that cares enough about you that loves you enough that will call you or come see you and and tell you what the Spirit of God is saying about you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You can't imagine how many people we we pray for every day because of knowing what's going on in their lives. Okay, so knowing the Holy Spirit is going to show us what will come. We need to to know these things. So 1 John 2, uh, verse 3, and and this is a real litmus test about, I know that I know. Oh, I Hallelujah. know that I know. Hallelujah. Listen to this verse. Now by this we know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. Oh, hallelujah. This is how we know that we know. If we keep his commandments, we'll know that we know. Hallelujah. That, that is exciting. And also in 1 Corinthians, uh, 1 John 20, uh, 2, verse 20 is what I was going to read that verse. This is out of the Amplified Bible. But you have an anointing from the Holy One. You have been set apart, specially gifted, and prepared by the Holy Spirit. And all of you know the truth because it teaches us, illuminates our minds, and guards us from all error. So you have anointing. What is it? It's the anointing anointing of of the Holy Spirit. That is the knowing. Uh, we all need Hallelujah. it. We need to operate. We need to know who the people are we're dealing with. Uh, can they be trusted? Can they not be mm-hmm. trusted? Are they embezzling? Mm-hmm. Uh, we need to know these things. Don't let things like that come upon you unexpectedly. Have enough relationship with the Holy Spirit. And being around a prof- the prophetic and the prophetic uh, gifts, mm-hmm. uh, that helps develop that gifting in knowing. And certainly... Uh, my gifting in knowing has uh, been enhanced uh, just being around the prophets. Uh, we need to know. We need to know what's going to come in the future. We know what's what's out there. We don't want to make a mistake. We don't want to go down the wrong road, we'll lose the time, lose the energy, and have money. We don't want to do those things. We need to know that we know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. Hallelujah. Now, there's another thing I believe that the Prophets are very important in, and this is my third point, the third and final point, and that is prophesying. I believe we need to be around the prophets mm-hmm. uh, in a company of uh, prophets uh, who uh, will equip all of us to prophesy uh, because we're building a kingdom, a, a supernatural Amen. kingdom, Amen. And, and it's going to be built. Hallelujah. God's going to build it. But he uses people like you and me uh, to build his kingdom. Now, we know from 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1, this is the way the chapter begins. And it says Mm -hmm. that we are to desire the superior gift. Now, there are a lot of gifts, but the superior gift in this verse is going to be prophesying. We need to Mm -hmm. earnestly Mm -hmm. desire prophesying. I'm going to read this verse to you. 1 Corinthians 14, 1, pursue love. Yet earnestly desire spiritual gifts, and especially that you may prophesy. Okay, what gift are we supposed to really desire? Especially? It's, it's to prophesy. It's to prophesy. We can all prophesy. Well, that's still in the same chapter down in the verse 31. What does this say? It says, for all can prophesy. We can all prophesy. Why? Well, Why? and then I'm, I'm okay. going to just okay. interject this right here, and that is, the Lord has many plans that he wants fulfilled. His will is to be fulfilled. And the vehicle that he uses 
is that voice of prophecy that speaks his will, his message into the earth. That's why it's important for all to be able to prophesy, Amen. not just the prophets, not just those that stand in the office of, of prophet, but for all believers to hear the voice of the Lord, to know what he wants and to speak his plan into the earth. Speak his plan into your family. Speak his plan into the workplace. Speak his plan uh, into your church congregation. He wants you to prophesy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, the prophetic equipping is to equip the saints, sure. Mature the saints, sure. But it's to bring God's will Amen. on the earth. Amen. That's the reason. Amen. That's the reason for prophecy is to bring God's, God's will, will on the earth. It's not just personal prophecy. Mm. Personal prophecy is just a small part, part of, of the prophetic mm -hmm. gifting. Oh, hallelujah. Mm, now, mm, mm. we're getting down to Ezra 6, and this is the most important. Well, and one other thing. Okay. I know of people that go from service to service, conference to conference, uh, just so they can get a word, just so they can hear a word, uh, a, a prophetic word. I need a prophetic word. I need a prophetic word. And see, that is, that tells me something. That tells me that are they really walking? I asked the question, are they really walking in the supernatural realm every single day? Because the Lord will speak to them and the Lord speaks to me and the Lord will speak to you every single day because we're walking with him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And let me tell you something. God is a communicator. He loves to communicate. He's not the silent type. He loves to talk. Hallelujah. And, and this is something that, that he enjoys. And so... Praise the Lord. I believe this is the most important verse of the of this message, and it's Ezra 6. And, and I want you to read that, and then we'll talk about it. Ezra 6, 14. And the elders of the Jews were successful in building through the prophecy of Haggai, the prophet, and Zechariah, the son of Edu. Okay. So what's going on here? Well, the kingdom is being built. They're building. And there are two things that are happening. Prophets are prophesying and other people are prophesying. And as a result of that, the building is successful. Hallelujah. So these are, not, these are not personal prophecies. These are not personal prophecies. These are prophesying God's will into the earth. Amen. And that's Amen. what I want you to focus on here, that uh, the prophetic equipping is to, to equip us so that we can bring God's will on the earth. I'll have a couple of other points I want to make. And, and that is, no more verses, mm -hmm. but just uh, points. And that is, uh, David was a prophet. That's Acts mm -hmm. uh, chapter two. Uh, he said he was a prophet. Uh, but you know, in Second Kings, uh, Second Samuel 7, uh, it, he needed to hear from a prophet. Here's a prophet. Now, what does a prophet do? Well, he hears from God. And he speaks it out. But here, David. Oh, no, 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 don't think that David was such a small person. I mean, he's a prophet. He's a prophet of God. He wrote many, many mm -hmm. uh, chapters, uh, uh, Psalms, uh, many, many different things. He wrote many things that are in our Bible today uh, that are important mm -hmm. for us today. And yet he needed to hear a prophet. So don't think you are so big and mighty uh, and, and strong that you can live without the prophets. We Don't all be without prophesying. We all need prophets, and we need to hear from you. We need to look. You are to prophesy God's will. Well, find out what God is saying to you to prophesy. You know Isaiah 35. We're not going to read it, but I just want to summarize it. There's three points 
uh, in the first six verses. And, and and first of all, he said, yeah, I'm going to bring water. I'm going to bring rain and, mm-hmm. and the deserts are going to bloom. And I, okay, that's the first part of it. Well, every time he's talking about water and rain and uh, that's about the Holy Spirit. I'm going to pour out the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. And, and and then he talks about people with the that are weak and, and the, they're, and they're feeble and feeble. And, uh, and and so he's going to pour out his spirit so that we can prophesy to those people who are weak and feeble and turned aside, not following the Lord as closely as they ought to. And then something important is going to happen. When we prophesy, this is Isaiah 35. When we prophesy, the supernatural realm is going to be opened up and the blind eyes are going to see it. Hallelujah. And the lame the are going to walk, walk and the deaf are going to hear. Because, see, when you prophesy, when you prophesy what God is saying to prophesy, it's going to open up the supernatural realm. I want to thank 